It's a beautiful day in Dundee, Illinois, and we are at a really special place, Max McGraw Conservation Area that's been around since the 1920s, I think. Max McGraw that actually invented the personal toaster in your house. <laughs> this is now a dedicated wildlife foundation. So they're really big, obviously, into conservation, but they have this beautiful trout stream right here. This is a native artesian spring. Come nice down. cold water. Icy cold. <laughs> here, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> They're also known for doing strip mine reclamation work, aquaponics, all types of cool stuff right. here. So we just want to learn a little bit more about what they have going here to see how we could adapt it into our systems. Today, we're going to show Ed's world, which is the conservation world, with some cool aquaponics. Let's awesome. go check this Let's stuff out. Max McGraw, this is his heritage wall, if you will. If you wanted toast in the 20s, 30s, you'd have to go to a restaurant to get a commercial And that was a, that toaster. Was a restaurant toaster right there. Hmm. Yeah, so what he did is he commercialized and brought the common appliance, the toaster, to the household kitchen. Someone had to do it. <laughs> right. This was a summer home. Uh, he was a big conservationist and passionate about the outdoors. In the late 40s, about 46, 48, he converted it to a foundation so that it could continue its conservation That's research. So cool. Very neat. My grandma had one like this. <laughs> All right, welcome to the aquaponics facility, right. huh? With our buddy Luke, who's our long-term uh, friend and customer at Labors of North America, and Gordy, right? Right. And you're the long-term, 23 years you've been on this operation, right? right. Uh, I'm the fisheries manager here at McGraw, so I manage the lakes. I do some research raising game fish, like smallmouth bass and walleye, and now we expand it into aquaponics. So that's the new drive. Which is so how we really actually cool. started working with Luke when we did yeah. the aquaponics. In fact, check out the link below if you want to see the donation that Luke made for the science department mm -hmm. over at Wheaton Academy. We actually <laughs> put in one of the aquaponics systems that you developed. How have you worked with Gordy over here as a member that's actually been very engaged with this part of the business? Same passion, aquaponics built off of our reclaimed packaging. And so with Gordy, we partnered and built a system for him able to support fruiting plants. And that's what we actually use over here at the dining facility, some of the stuff that you grow here. Correct. Yeah, the lettuce that we grow, we feed the pond cottage. And the members catch the fish that you raise from fry. <laughs> Correct. All right, this is so cool. <laughs> this awesome. is Ed's world, but I love this stuff. Let's go check this out. Let's do it. We've got three different types of things going on here today. We're doing some research using game fishing in aquaponics. Very few people use game fish. We're actually raising walleye, and right now the experiment we're doing is we're trying a couple different feeds to see which feed would produce the, the largest fish. Sure. How this system works is we have a series of filters, and what we have is a circular motion inside a tank. We don't want the solids to stay in the system. And then it leaves the tank, it comes gravity fed, into this filter and this is settling basin, a clarifier. So the solids settle out and then we drain this once every couple days. And then it goes into a biofilter. Probably one of the most important parts of the whole system. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's three living components to this. We have the fish, the plants, and the biofilter. The biofilter is basically nitrifying bacteria. Yep. This is exactly what yep. we use. This is like bio balls. Bio yep. balls. Yep. Exactly. Bio balls. That's yep. it. Yep. They got a real high surface area so there's lots of area for the bacteria to grow yeah. on. There's all types of little stuff growing on there. Yep. Check that out. Oh yeah. And then the water goes into our grow tank. These are rafts. Plants grow just right in the water. The roots are in the water. Yeah, yeah. Look at how awesome that is. That looks like some healthy lettuce too. Yes, it is. So that's a month worth of growth right there. Yes. Six weeks we'll be harvesting. Right now we have 50 walleye per tank and they are about four inches long. Okay. And it will take about a year for the walleye to be harvested at about a pound. That's that's the goal. Yeah, okay, that's that, the that, experiment. That's the, I want to try making a food sized fish, but also in a stocking aspect. Larger fish you grow, better survival you have, so. To more stock like, the lakes for those members to fish in. Exactly. Yep. Very exactly. cool. Well, what I like about it is this is exactly what we're doing in people's backyards. We have settling chambers. We have a biofalls. We have a sedimentation chamber on the bottom. We have our skimmer filter. We have rock gravel. We have aquatic plants inside of yep. it. So this is the exact same thing, but in a more controlled environment. So 
So Luke, this is something that you put together for school kids to come here, because part of your, your mission here is education. Gordy and his associate Scott put together for approximately $100 or so. You can yep. put these into school classrooms and yep. actually demonstrate by using just local caught fish that recycles and circulates through the media, grows the plants, returns the water of the fish. This media also works as that biofilter yep. system. You go into a classroom very easily. It just it replicates on a smaller scale, which you guys do here on a commercial scale. This is one of the passions I have. I want to get this into the classroom. and We needed something that had a small footprint that didn't break the bank. All of this was bought either at Walmart or right. Petco. And that, this is one of your theories. If people could understand a pond, they can understand the earth. Exactly. We live on an aquatic planet, obviously, so we're driven by the water cycle. By understanding how all this stuff operates, we could understand the lakes, rivers, streams, and oceans of our planet. We could better understand it, we could manage it, and we could help feed a growing population affordably. If they offered this in school, I might have actually liked school. <laughs> This is the one that Luke oh, yeah. for us. Beautiful. In that type of system, we're going to have higher density of fish. The whole goal is to produce fruiting plants like tomatoes, peppers, and it's more for a demonstration purpose to show that you can grow more than just lettuce in aquaponics. This whole system is also made out of these totes, the same ones that we Yeah, the made, food so. containers that mm -hmm. you use in your business. We have about 275 gallons of water for the fish up top, about 150 red-eared sunfish. The water flows through each one of these levels nutrifying for the plants. Right now we've got uh, jalapeno, sweet pepper, eggplant, heirloom tomatoes, and then all the water returns down to a lower sump pup pit so that it always maintains the same level in the tanks. This is a belt feeder yeah. and it's a 24, you can get a 12 hour 24 hour belt feeder. It's got a clock mechanism and a spring mechanism. So what you do is you pull the, the belt back It'll feed within the, the 24 hour period, so you're constantly feeding, rather than hand feeding every four hours or something. We're feeding about 2% of the fish's body weight. We'll measure the fish about every two weeks. Okay, and then so we add can, out. can determine so we can increase the feed. So walleye, we put in the system about 15 days ago. All right, so I'm gonna go and net a couple fish out. This is one of our walleye. Ah, that's awesome. Beautiful. Now that's uh, about a four and a half inch fish, about uh, two and a half months old. Okay. There we go. That's a pretty nice looking fish. Yeah. Well, we that, do, we... That's a proud father for you right yes, there. Yes, it is. Absolutely. <laughs> we go out and we actually collect our root stock. We strip the eggs, incubate the eggs. We put the fish in ponds, the fry in the ponds. And then after about 30, 40 days, we take them out and then we feed train them. Because my goal is by end of next May 2019 to have 14 inch fish in here. Wow. That's really neat. All right, so let's check out where these fish actually come from originally. system we had fish in all these tanks these four tanks actually were messing around you know, trying to see if we can grow lettuce and we were able to do it and that's how I got the idea hey let's try uh, raising game fish with aquaponics so this is the original facility here this is where the fry come from before you transfer them over to the greenhouse right correct we have smallmouth bass in our tank now we actually go out and scuba dive and take the fry off now, let me ask you a question you get paid to work here <laughs> yeah, yeah awesome. it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool so what i'm going to do with these guys is um, i want to compare the feeds also similar to what i'm doing with the walleye and see which one i get better growth so ed why did you bring us here today just to show the the connection between having a backyard ecosystem pond as well as aquaponics and restocking natural lakes they're all intertwined they yeah. all have their individual pieces but so there's so much crossover and we can learn a lot from each other so ed is our scientist at aquascape he's our chief sustainability officer and a lot of the products that were developed that we developed together were based off of his degree in limnology the study of freshwater ecosystems so gordy to see a guy that's uh thank you living his past is yeah, quite awesome. exciting to me and Luke thank you for introducing us to another cool one of your friends out here and if you like this stuff like comment subscribe so more people could see what conservation minded people are doing out there and what living the aquascape lifestyle looks like from a conservation side good stuff Ed. all right